going to get started for today. This is week seven of our digital learning for Eisenhower High School. And this week I have something very exciting to show you. We're going to be doing a scientific but visual investigation of something from outside and then we're going to make it our own mythical creature. Now, my example here, we'll go into the exact details a little bit later, hopefully this is focusing, is an African lily, but they grow in Texas. I literally found it right outside of my apartment. Now, our challenge for this week, week seven, is to make something mythical out of something ordinary, something you would see outside and maybe even bring in to draw from. That's what I hope you guys do. So I took my object, I did a one-line drawing, did a little historical references and research on an object from the past, then did a couple other materialistic studies, so I did some mark-making studies on how I could differentiate the marks I was using in my artwork, and then I took all of that information that I had cultivated and I formed my own mythical creature from that object. So I'm really excited to show you guys a little bit more of the details and we'll get into that right now for your template. Alrighty, so for our template today, what you need to do is find one piece of paper. Doesn't matter what kind of paper, if you have thick paper, that's awesome. This is like a watercolor paper, so it's a little bit more used to getting some water and wet materials on it compared to dry materials, but whatever you have works. So, in the top left of this template, you need to have your name, date, and the materials that you used or are going to use for this project. The next section is a one continuous contour line drawing of the object that you chose from the outdoors. Now it can be anything from a leaf to a vine to an acorn, a flower, whatever you find that interests you and you think that you can find some way to make a mythical creature out of. So like I said before, mine was an African lily. You can see here, this one's from yesterday, it's a little wilted but I found it just outside and that was my experimentation study for this week. Now down here. We have the historical example of a similar mythical creature and the source. This one is very important because this is what we're going to use as inspiration for our final piece of our mythical creature drawing. Over here, with our historical example, we're not looking for something specific like a sprite if you're going to draw a sprite. We are looking for something that is going to inspire us with its design, its color scheme, something a little bit more broad so that we can take inspiration from it without stealing or copying it exactly. Now one of the most important things here, which is why it is un underlined, is the source. You need to include the website source and write it down from where you got it. If you do not, that is extremely, extremely bad and it's super important that you cite your sources. So do it. Just write it down. Up here, we have our scientific name of your object and the definition. Mine is the African lily. I also have the Latin terminology written down on my finished work and the definition. So mine was a 70 year old plant, can live up to 70 years, and just some more basic information about the object that you chose. Next, we have the drawing of our reference object. This is going to be different from our one continuous line drawing because remember our contour lines are the outside and the inside of the object that we're drawing and our drawing of the reference object, I treated more like a mark making study. I wanted to make sure I understood exactly what kind of marks I wanted for my finished drawing, so I experimented with pointillism, hatching, and cross hatching in my drawing of my reference object. So the one cont continuous contour line drawing and the drawing of my reference object are just drawings of the object you chose from outside. Nothing more, nothing less. Then we have the artist name, name of the artwork, date, year of creation, and location of creation for your historical example. These are just more information on the artist that you found inspiration from. Also, extremely essential. Then, once you find all of the information about your object, we're going to turn it into a mythical creature. So, you need to have the name of your creature, original to you. You need to have the front view of your creature if it was looking straight at you the left side view, the right side view. On my example, I actually did the back side view, so how you would walk if you were approaching them from behind. And this is our template for this week. So my finished work of art is something like a visual arts journal page because it has so much information both visually and with our uh, textual content as well. So you can see I have my the name, date, my materials, my one-line drawing, 
my historical example down here with all of my information, and even if it has no artist's name, you still list that. Mine was from 481 BC to, or to 280, 221 BC, so it was anywhere between there. We didn't have the artist's name, but I wrote that down as well as my source. Now, here's my mark making study, as well as all of my information. I'm going to attempt it. Agapanthus praecox. Perfect. African lily. All right. And then this is my mythical creature. This is my final work. Even though this entire thing in itself is a work of art, I decided to name it the Texan bush lily. Because hopefully if you ever were able to see a mythical creature like this, it would be in a bush in Texas. So this is my little sprite that I made based off of my African lily. Hopefully you can see the resemblance off of the skirt and over the top. And then of course the hair coming down here as well. And I kept a similar color scheme to the flower that I chose as well. So here's the front view, the left side view, and the back view. Some of a cape from the petals coming down here as well. So here's my finished work of art. Remember it shouldn't look like mine as far as my artwork goes, but the template should be similar. I want to see that original work of art based on what you chose from the outdoors. Oh, okay, so now that you understand the template and my final work of art, which I'll show again here, based on the African lily I found outside. Boing. We are going to attempt this for week seven. Remember, for my classes in particular, I'd like to have your artwork by Thursdays, before midnight, preferably, because I want to keep us to a nice deadline so we're all on the same page. Don't forget about all of those activities that are online as well. And that's pretty much all I have for this project. Now, to keep you guys up to date to kind of what I'm doing, I've been fostering an amazing dog named Barnett. He's a three-year-old Great Dane lab mix. He has one brown eye and one blue eye, and he's just super sweet and goofy. So I've loved fostering him, and I also have been taking classes online at the Museum of Modern Art. Just online, not there, because that's in New York. But I have like five notebooks of all the classes I'm taking, because I'm taking tons of notes for what I am learning as well as what I hope to bring to the classroom next year. So to give you guys a little insight, I have In the Studio, Post-War Abstract Painting, Modern Art and Ideas is another class, What is Contemporary Art, Fashion as Design, and I also have a teaching one, Art and Ideas, Teaching with Theories, and my final one is my IB Notes, International Baccalaureate. So, that's a little bit on what I've been doing. I've been drinking tons of coffee, cooking a lot, trying to exercise as much as possible, and recently watching The Good Doctor. That's, that's a pretty good show. So that's a little update on how I'm doing. If you guys need anything or just want to tell me how you guys are doing and what you've been up to, I'd absolutely love to hear it. But, in the meantime, I'm going to go drink some lesson planning juice, also known as coffee. Bye!